Luke chapter number 7 and verse number 19 is where we'll begin reading tonight. The Bible said, And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Praise the Lord. Would you ask the Lord to help us tonight? Precious God of heaven, Lord, I stand here needing your help tonight to come by and anoint us this holy word that we've read, God, that you would give us, Lord, the unction to preach tonight. And God, I pray for that one that's discouraged tonight, Lord, that one that's full of doubt and indecision, God, that you'd help them, you'd encourage them, Lord, to serve and to do what they need to do, Lord. Would you give us revival? Would you give us a move of the Holy Ghost in this meeting? Help us tonight in our altar service. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Again, we do count it an honor and a privilege to be asked to be here with you and to preach. And we're just enjoying uh, settling in in this area and these brethren uh, that's real close to us that we get to fellowship a good bit. And uh, we appreciate them and their spirit. I want to preach tonight if the Lord would help us. Uh, for a, for a thought or a title, I want to preach on the final approach. The final approach. John, the Baptist, was the cousin of Jesus Christ. He was born of Zechariah and Elizabeth when they were of an old age, and it looked like that her time of having a child was past. You know the story how that Zechariah went into that to the temple to administer his duty there. And while he was in there, he had a vision and a visitation from God. The Lord visited him and gave him a, gave him a word from the Lord and told him that, that his wife would have a son, that a, their son would come into their home. And uh, it seemed like there might have been some unbelief there or some doubt in his heart and mind, and he kind of questioned it. And the Lord told him that uh, that he would indeed have a son and that his name should be John, but he wasn't, would, would not speak another word out of his mouth until that child uh, was born, until the word of God was fulfilled. And so he came out, and when he came out, everybody looked at him, and they knew he had uh, seen the Lord. He'd seen a vision. Something great had happened. And so that was the beginning and the conception of John the Baptist. Sure enough, a few months later when John the Baptist is born and, and eight days has gone by and the family gathers in and they start talking about what we're going to name the child. And somebody said, well, we know we got to name him after his dad. And uh, that's just the way we need to do it. But finally, <coughs> John the Baptist called for a tablet. And the Bible said, the way I read that is, as he began to write, he began to speak. And the child shall be named John. Amen. And uh, God done a great work. And I feel like from the very beginning, uh, uh, Zach, Zachariah was a holy man. I feel like that, uh, and uh, I want to read you a few scriptures here about what he said when the Lord moved on him. In uh, chapter number 1, about verse number 67, And his father, uh, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. And he hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Down in verse 75, In holiness and in righteousness before him 
all the days of our life. <coughs> and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the most, of, of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, to prepare his ways. So right in the beginning of his life, there's a prophecy made by his father as he will be a forerunner of Christ. And so from that time on, I feel like the years that, that his father had with him, he did everything he could, Brother Mark, to pour into him what it meant <coughs> to serve the Lord. What it meant to be holy and righteous and live for the Lord and do what he needed to do. To fulfill that call that was on his life. Amen. He had a great upbringing and great parents. But not only that, I believe also that he had a personal experience with the Lord. Let me tell you, young folks, it's great to have parents that take you to church and that live right and live holiness and uh, live a standard and live uh, at home in front of you. Uh, but they can live as good, uh, amen, as they can in the sight of the Lord. But their life will in itself not save you. There has to come a time when you have a personal experience with the Lord where you come to a place and you want the God of your father and the God of your mother and you fall before him and begin to pray and to seek him and you get a personal experience for yourself. Amen. Why was John used by God and why was he so great? I feel like, amen, not only his upbringing, but he had that personal experience experience with God. Amen. Not only did he have that personal relationship where then he read the scripture and he lived the scripture and it become part of him. But then also, amen, this great event that took place in his life. Stay with me. I'm trying to get somewhere tonight. But this great event that took place in his life. Amen. He's prophesied. He's preached there on the bank of the Jordan River. And people have come out to hear him preach. You know, that also shows a personal relationship. For he was anointed of the Holy Ghost. And as he is preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's preaching the acts. He's laid to the root of the tree. Amen. He's preaching. Amen. This is the day of the Lord. Uh, he's preaching. Uh, amen. To those that are soldiers. Uh, not to do violence. Uh, and he's preaching to those that are publicans and Sadducees and Levites. He's preaching them the gospel. Uh, and they're coming out to hear him preach. Uh, but one day as he's out there baptizing. Uh, he's been telling them uh, about one who is coming. Who is mightier than him. He, uh, amen, who is he? He said, I'm not even worthy to stoop down uh, and unloose his shoe latchets. Uh, hey, and there's coming one, I baptize you with water. Uh, there is coming one, amen, that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost uh, and with fire. Uh, and sure enough, as he's preaching one day, uh, he looks up and Jesus Christ uh, comes and stands on the banks of the river. Uh, and he cries out, Behold, uh, amen, the Lamb of God. Uh, you know the story how that John takes Jesus down into the water. Amen. And he baptizes him. Uh, and he comes up and a voice speaks out of heaven and says, This is my beloved <coughs> Excuse me tonight. <coughs> Son in whom I'm well pleased. <coughs> Amen. And then the Holy Ghost descends like a dove and sits down on his shoulder. Amen. And there he abides. Amen. So he's had a good upbringing. He's had a, a personal experience with the Lord. Thank you, brother. Amen. And now he's had this mighty experience of holding the Son of God in His arms and baptizing down Him him into the water. I want to preach if the Lord would help me a little while tonight on that final approach. Amen. When I look at the life of John the Baptist, amen, I guess every preacher in here would have to look and there'd be a certain, a certain amount of wondering how that would really be. Amen. To be standing out in that Jordan River with the Son of the living God in your arms. Amen. Oh, John, Jesus even spoke of John and said, There's not one been born of woman any greater than John. Amen. Amen. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? I tell you what, they went to see a flame of fire. So 
someone anointed of the Holy Ghost. Uh, someone preaching, amen, the truth of God's Word. Uh, that's what they went out to see. Uh, amen. But oh, I want to tell you a little bit about that final approach. Uh, amen. It doesn't matter how good you shouted uh, in camp meetings gone by or in days gone by. Uh, but I'll tell you what's critical tonight and in this meeting uh, is where are we standing tonight with God? Uh, amen. If we look around and we think back, uh, I remember so many years ago in the meeting uh, uh, when I danced down the aisle uh, uh, when I prayed through to the Holy Ghost uh, when I left with such faith uh, but I want to ask you how are we tonight uh, amen because you see we're getting closer uh, to our final approach uh, all that John done was good uh, amen but I tell you things are getting critical now in his life uh, for he has went and stood uh, right in the face of Herod uh, and he has withstood him uh, over that adulterous affair uh, that he was having with his brother's wife. Uh, and he told him that it was sin uh, and that it was not pleasing in the sight of God. Uh, and so they placed him in prison. And they uh, would soon take his head off, uh, amen, of his shoulders uh, and bring his head in on a charter. Uh, I don't understand everything. Uh, I know uh, there's times that men pray like Peter that's in prison uh, and they have plans to kill him. Uh, amen. And the Lord, the angels come down and unlock the doors uh, and the church pray them out. Uh, I don't understand, but I do know that death is appointed uh, unto every one of us. Uh, and whether you go as a young man or an old man, whether you go as a martyr or die of old age, you can be assured we've all got an appointment, amen, with death. John the Baptist wasn't afraid of death. No, he wasn't afraid of laying his head down on that chop block for the sake of truth. But sitting in that cell, amen, all of a sudden a visitor came that was not invited. Amen, all of a sudden, Amen. Uh, nobody put a key in the door. <coughs> nobody knocked. Uh, but the spirits of hell and the devil uh, begin to come into that cell where John was. Uh, I can see him sitting there. <coughs> and realizing... Amen. That a time uh, is getting close. Uh, realizing that he doesn't have long to live. Uh, amen. And then all of a sudden here comes this attack. And Satan says, Amen, are you sure that that was really the Son of God? Are you sure that you're dying for a just cause? Are you sure this is the way to live? Are you sure that you're on the right road? And old doubt came in that cell with him. I'm talking about a man that has held the Son of God in his arms. I'm talking about somebody, Amen, that's preached on the riverbank and been a Morning by the Holy Ghost. But now all of a sudden doubt is flooded into his heart. Amen. I want to preach to you what's on my heart tonight. Amen. You are not exempt from this attack. Amen. You may say, well, surely that's just the weak. And that's just those that's got cold and they're not where they need to be. I want to tell you there's men and women in this house what the Lord dealt with me about. That's been faithful for years. That served God for years. Amen. And you've got to say, Brother Gentry, I've come to this meeting. Amen. Fighting doubt worse than I've ever fought it in my life. Amen. He's worn in my home. He's worn maybe even on my job. He might even be worn in your church. But i tell you what it's all about. The devil does not want us to make that final approach. And he doesn't want us to land safe on the other side. I mean, you can serve the Lord for 50 years. And if he can cause you to get discouraged in the end uh, and turn your back on the church uh, and walk away because somebody uh, maybe hurt your feelings uh, or somebody done something that offended you uh, and caused you to lose out with him. Uh, amen. Then Satan uh, has done his work. Uh, amen. But 
the truth is, one of the most dangerous times. Hey, man, I flew a little bit, not like a lot of these brethren, but I have flew some. Hey, man, I get a little nervous when they take off. Still, amen. First time my wife ever flew. Hey, man, she flew with me. Hey, man, she was holding my hand. Hey, man, time we got off the air. Hey, up in the air, my shirt sleeve was wet. Hey, man. I mean, she was sweating. She was holding on. Hey, man, she got a little nervous. You know how we do. It's all right. It's all right. It'll be okay. But I tell you, whenever time that big bird starts sitting down, hey, man, I start feeling a little anxious. Hey, man, because I know it's a little easier to get it up. Hey, man, just keep her them engines going. But when they cutting the power off and they setting it down on the ground and you look at them little bitty wheels and that little bit of street of asphalt, hey, man, I just get to thank him. Hey, and they'll say, this is our final approach. Buckle your seat belts. Put your seats up. Put your trays up. I mean, it's fixing to get serious. I want to tell you where we're at, church, in 2009. We're getting close to that final approach. I don't feel like it's going to be much longer. Amen. We're going to sit down. Amen. In another world. Amen. On the other side of eternity. And the devil does not want us to have a safe landing. He doesn't want it. He wants to do everything he can. Amen. To keep us. I mean, here is John and the Spirit of the Lord that has led him and helped him for so long. And he's saying, is this really him? Well, I want to tell you what he done. Number one, he did not have any pride about himself. A lot of times the reason we struggle when we come to a good meeting like this, some of our closest friends, I feel like if I had a need tonight, (coughs) if I was sick or whatever it might be, I feel like some of the people, Brother Watson, that would pray for me with the most diligence is in this building right here tonight. Amen. People that would pick me up. uh, People that would help me. uh, People that would come. uh, And we'd do the same for you. uh, But yet we come to a meeting like this. uh, And the very first night we come in, our mind is amazed. uh, Amen. Our spirits are low. uh, We're doubting different things. uh, And we come in. uh, And we're almost too full of pride or have too much shame ever how you want to say it to come up and just say hey the devil's been fighting me and I want to have revival this week I would somebody shake loose of that tonight and just make this first night your night and say hey I've been serving the Lord too long to come to camp meeting and let him fight me all week long I've been serving the Lord too long uh, to come. Uh, amen. And feel like I'm going to be a failure. Uh, and God ain't going to help me. Uh, but what we need to do is say, hey, uh, we're getting close to the end in this thing. Uh, and we need to all uh, uh, pray one for another. Amen. You see, several years ago, hey man, you know, I started to wait to uh, Lord dealt with me about this a few days ago, and I started to wait. My mom's supposed to be here tomorrow night and be with us a few nights. I thought I'll just wait till she gets here. But today, I just couldn't do it. I felt like the Lord dealt with me. I need to preach this tonight. Amen. But Brother Neil, I remember several years ago, back in 1995, amen, my dad made his final approach. Amen. He got to where when he was... Uh, Go, he was having some headaches and different things, but it got to where when he would go to turn in a driveway to his left into his home or church, very familiar places that he would over, uh, uh, over, override the driveway or miscalculate it. He'd end up almost in the ditch or he'd miss the area. So he went to the eye doctor. When he got to the eye doctor, they done a peripheral vision test and they told him, Said, you've had a stroke or something, you need to go to your doctor. So he went to his doctor and they done x rays and they found a massive brain tumor. And they told my dad, they said uh, they didn't want him to leave, but they did finally let him go home, take care of some of things he needed to, and uh, came back that evening. They scheduled him for sur- uh, surgery the next morning. And uh, they done that surgery, they didn't give him a good 
uh, prognosis in the very beginning. And he lived two, two months from the day of surgery. He passed away. And I remember when we were all getting ready for that, that time, that surgery was getting close. And, and the morning was dawning and we all gathered in and I was walking with dad down to the, down to where the, they take him into those doors and I couldn't go no further. And I was walking with him. Hey man, and I, he was mumbling, you know, or I say mumbling, he was praying, but he was just moving his mouth. And we got right up to the door and I said, well, daddy, you want to pray one more time for, before you go in? And hey man, and he just looked at me. He said, son, he said, we can. He said, but I've been a praying. Hey man, I've been a praying. He said, I've asked the Lord. He said, as far as I know, I've, I'm, there ain't nothing in my heart that's not right. I don't know of a thing. He said, but I've been praying, coming down this hall, Lord, search my heart. If there's anything in my heart of life that don't need to be there, Lord, show it to me. Tell me about it. Let me fix it. You know why? Hey, man, the doctors has told him, hey, man, you, you, you got a good chance of coming out. Hey, man, but you might not. Hey, man, he's on his final approach. Hey, man, he came out of surgery and he did uh, did fire for about a month, and then he started regressing right back to the same place, and and we went down very quick, hey man. And that last week, about midnight, one night, about a week before he passed away, mom came and woke me up and said, "Your dad's having problems." And so I got up and went into where he was in the house, and he was having chest pains and some other things, and and so I, I helped him. We got him got him up and got him ready and put him in the vehicle and headed to the emergency room. And, of course, they took him right in, put him in the hospital. The doctors came in, talked to him, talked with us, and said he's probably got just about 24 or 48 hours is about all the time he's got left. Amen. The final approach. Amen. You can say a lot when you feel pretty healthy. Amen. I mean, it's a lot easier to lay out of church and go fishing on midweek service when you're real healthy than when you think I hadn't got but about 48 hours to live. All of a sudden, fishing doesn't seem so important. I'm not against fishing, but I am for getting our priorities right. I am for being at church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and the midweek. Come on, help me while I preach. Amen. I mean, I believe in blue ribbon, pure vanilla holiness. I believe in living a separated holy life. Amen. But you can live all you want to Whatever standards you want to live. But if you're not faithful to the house of God, hey man, you don't love Him like you need to love Him. Amen. Hey man and dad. Hey man's on that final approach. Hey man, I said, Dad, we had revival scheduled. We was in revival that week at the church. Dad, you want me to cancel the meeting? No, son. Amen. Let them have revival. Amen. That Sunday morning. Amen. The hospital was full of people. Amen. And all of a sudden, amen, dad's eyes, amen, rolled back in his head. I jumped up and ran up to the bed. Amen. It seemed like that uh, he was leaving us. And then it kind of regressed. It kind of come back. He came back to us. Hey man, and I remember, hey man, he told mama, was right there, and grabbed her by the hand, and he told her he loved her. And I mean, it wasn't maybe two minutes later, hey man, he went into eternity. Hey man, that was a brother that was there. Uh, that was down at the hospital. The room was full. The waiting room was full. He went down into the chapel area and he was praying. I mean, he came back up after dad had passed away. He didn't know he passed away when he came back up to the room. Hey man, he called me out. We were talking. He said, I hadn't talked with anybody, but I want to ask you something. I said, what is it? He said, I was down there praying and he said, the Lord gave me a vision. And he said, I'll tell you what I saw. He said, I seen two angels come down and put their arms, amen, underneath their dad. And said they started up with him and, and said it was, it was the end. And he said they got 
up about the roof level and said, your dad kept looking down at your mom and said in a little bit, they just eased him back down in that bed and said he rose up and said he told her he loved her and said, and then they grabbed him and they never looked back. Hey, man, oh, I want to tell you. I, hey, man, I don't know just how it is when we go into eternity, but I know my dad made his final approach. I know when they had his funeral. Hey, man, they shouted. They rejoiced. They praised God. Not because uh, he was dead, uh, but because he was alive, uh, but because he'd made that final approach uh, successful. Uh, I want to tell you, John's coming in now. Uh, I mean, things is getting a little turbulent. Uh, I remember landing over Costa Rica one time. Uh, we circled at our port, uh, and we circled it again, uh, and we circled it again. Uh, we circled it until the pilot said, uh, we've either got to go through that thunderstorm, uh, and land down there in the middle of it or we got to fly somewhere else. We're going to run out of fuel. And they buckled us all down. And they come in and they started sliding when we hit the runway. Sliding down the runway. I mean, it was a, a scary time. But thank God we finally made it. And we got on the ground. I want to tell you, it might feel like in your life tonight. It's been shaky lately. I used to have faith that didn't wait. I used to not have doubt about anything. But Brother Steve, the devil, has been attacking my mind. Amen. He's been attacking me. And I can't think like I used to think. I can't even hardly pray like I used to pray. I want to tell you, it's not a shame to come down to this altar and say, pray for me, church. I'm nearing my final approach. And I want to make it all the way. Amen. In my text, John did not just let that thing wear him out. You know what he did? He called two of his disciples. And he said, I want you to go and find Jesus and I want you to ask him, Art thou he that should come or look we for another? And so they went. They finally found Jesus. And when they come up to him, they ask him this question. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, amen, and evil spirits. Unto them that were blind, he gave sight, amen. In other words, he told them when they got there, he said, y'all just sit right here. He never did tell him them, go back and tell them I said that I'm the one. But he said, sit down. Hey man, and I want to show you some things. And all of a sudden, hey man, the blind's eyes was open. The evil spirits was cast out. The deaf began to hear. The lame began to dance. I mean, the Spirit of God was moving around there. You know what you need to make this final approach a little better for all of us? Hey man, we need to see the power of God fall in this building. Hey man, see souls getting saved. I see healings taking place. We need to see God move and give us courage to know we're on the right path. You get on the road sometimes and you wonder, Brother Lynn, you're doing some traveling now. You ever get on one of them long roads and you get to traveling and you get to wonder, am I on the right road? I mean, I thought I turned where the sign said turn, but I might have missed the sign. And the road might have turned and I've been going the wrong way. And the longer I ride, I just kind of get, well, I hope I see a sign before long. Hey Amen. Then all of a sudden you'll see a sign. Hey Amen. I'm on the right road. Hey Amen. Oh, help me while I preach. You know what we need in this meeting? Hey Amen. We need a confirmation from heaven. Hey Amen. Not just somebody to say, Brother Corey, you're on the right road. You're doing right. You're evangelizing. That's the will of God. That's what you need to do. Hey Amen. Well, that's good for people to tell you that. But I tell you, when a confirmation comes from the other world, when you see the road sign uh, and you say, I know uh, I'm on the right road. Uh, amen. When all of a sudden a home uh, is put back together. Uh, when all of a sudden a drunkard, uh, amen, is cured of their drunkenness. Uh, when a dope addict uh, is delivered from their dope. Uh, when somebody pre- 
praise through uh, the whole time sanctification. Uh, it makes you say, I know uh, I'm on the right road. Uh, I've seen him move again. Uh, I've seen him heal again. Uh, I've seen him deliver again. Praise God. John, he said, go tell John the things that you've heard and you've seen. I don't believe they came in there to where John was and said, well, John, you're going to sit down. It's going to take a while. You know, we've seen him and he was praying for people and, you know, no. I feel like John heard them before they ever got to sail. Hey, man, he's a probably dancing and a shouting and a screaming and a hollering. He comes sliding in there where it was and said, John, it's him. Hey, man, let us tell you what we saw. Let us tell you what we heard. I wish we could have such a meeting around here. Hey, man, what about old brother? Hey, man, brother. Uh, hey, man, brother. Ben, he get to shouting. Uh, hey, man, brother. Tommy get to rolling in the floor. Uh, hey, man, brother. Paul get to, hey, man, jumping over the altar. Uh, the sinners and get to running to the, hey, man, front to get saved. Uh, I ain't talking about just emotionalism. Uh, I'm talking about a move uh, of the Holy Ghost and to take a doubt out of your life and prove to you who he is. Amen. I've never been attacked by doubt, you may say. John was. Amen. I feel like they shared with him, they shadowed with him, they showed him all these things. And he rejoiced and he shouted. Hey, man, they came to take him to that chop block. Hey, man, I feel like he went with one thing in mind. I'm making my final approach. Hey, man, I don't want to make it right. I was reading just a few days ago a little story in a book. I shared it with my wife when I come across it to touch my heart. During the Civil War, there was a young man that was wounded. His leg was crushed and twisted and just mutilated. The only way to of course, save his life. Any hope of saving his life was to amputate his leg. We're talking about in the 1800s, 1860s, far cruder than anything we have now before. Out there in the field trying to save a man's life, Brother Tony. They brought in the old saws and they cut his leg off. And the nurse said they tried and they tried to tie the vein, the main artery that had to be severed. But said they couldn't get it tied. Finally, she just clamped it down and held it as long as she could. And she told him, when I let go, you're going to die. When I let go, you're going to die. He's on his final approach. He said, bring me a tablet. Bring me a pencil. I want to write my dear mother a letter. Amen. He wrote her a letter and he said, can you hold on a little longer? I want to pray. And I want to settle it all with the Lord. I want to make sure everything's right. Amen. Could you hold on a little longer? Amen. While he prayed. And finally he came to a place where he told her. He said, you can let go when you want to. Oh, great God. Woo! Amen. Brother Bud, I've heard you testify and shout. Amen. Many times. Even as of lately, you know what he said? He said, I'm just waiting whenever God gets ready. Amen. He can let go when he wants to. I'm ready to go. Have you, are you in that place in your life where you can say, Lord, amen, I'm ready to go when you want me to come. If you want me to stay here, I'll preach. I'll fight. I'll labor. I'll work. I'll do what you want me to. But uh, we're going to make our final approach in a little while. Uh, is everything all right between you and the Lord? Hallelujah. Doubts flooding your mind. You feel tonight like, you know, I don't, I don't really know, Brother Gentry, if I'm saved or not. The devil's battling my mind and I really don't know. I want to tell you, we can get rid of doubt tonight. Was it in the book of Daniel? Amen. Nebuchadnezzar called for Daniel and he said, I heard you can, you got the Spirit of the Lord, you can dissolve doubt. Praise God. I tell you, there's something in this building right here tonight. If you get to pray and pray all the way through, it can dissolve doubt out of your mind. You can leave this building knowing that your name's in the Lamb Book of Life. 
knowing that you're saved, knowing that you're sanctified, knowing that you got the Holy Ghost, anything he's battling you with, you can leave tonight with an assurance that he's done the work in your life. Amen. Would you stand to your feet tonight? Praise God. I've tried to preach to you in my heart tonight. Amen. I want to ask you, these brethren, if they could come back around and try to, you got somebody all right? Amen. They sung to us just a few minutes ago, help is on the way. You come for help, you come needing help. I want to tell you, help's on the way in this meeting. And all you've got to do is make your way to this altar. Put out of your mind what anybody thinks. The truth is, nobody thinks bad. The devil uses that against us. But the truth is, we're all for you. Amen. We want to have meeting. We want to have a move of God. But we got to have doubt rolled away out of our heart and our mind. Amen. As they begin to play, precious God of heaven, Lord, I've done my best to preach what you've laid on my heart tonight. And I'm asking you that when it's here, God, that needs help from the Lord, they'd make their move. They'd get help in these altars. While the church is praying, maybe there's one right now. Before we all come, you'd say, Brother Steve, this message has been for me tonight. I need help. I need a touch from the Lord. I've been battling doubt. He's been living at my house. He's been tormenting my mind. And I'm ready to put him out. I'm ready for the victory. Amen. In my heart and life. Here's our one. We want you to come quickly. Amen. Before we all come, you're here and you need the church to pray for you. Pour their heart out to you. Is there one? Amen. Right now. Praise the Lord. All right, church, let's come. Let's gather in. Let's begin to seek the Lord. Oh, let's put doubt out tonight. Let's get that blessed assurance working in our heart and our life. Let's know what Jesus has done in our heart and our soul. Come on.